स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Last time we saw the axioms for groups. Uh, now today I'm going to tell you about how to construct new groups from old. So one of the simplest ways of constructing a new group from an old group is by taking a subgroup. So what is a subgroup? You start with a group G, and so you remember that this comes with uh, technically it's a set G and a binary operation which we'll denote here by dot and this operation satisfies various axioms such as uh, associativity, um, identity and inverse it satisfies these axioms. Now a subgroup is a subset of G. So, The subgroup is a subset H of G. Such that. One. So this group has an identity element, which I'll denote by I. So the identity element of G belongs to H. The second is that it's closed under this binary operation dot. That is, if x and y lie in H, then x dot y is in H. And the third axiom is, um, if x belongs to H, then x inverse belongs to h. So I guess you can leave out the first axiom here because uh, it follows from 2 and 3. Because if x belongs to h, x inverse belongs to h and then x times x inverse which is the identity belongs to h. So identity belongs to h. So in any case, so you, so you only need to check these two. Okay, now let's look at some examples of subgroups. So you may remember that uh, we have uh, the subgroup of permutations. So S3 is the group of all permutations on three letters. It's all the ways of taking the numbers 1, 2, 3 and rearranging them, bijections from the set 1, 2, 3 to the set to itself. So this group has um, six elements. I'm going to show you some subgroups of this group. So let's try to, uh, so this has uh, some very nice elements. Let's call S the element uh, given by S1 is 2, S2 is 1 and S3 is three. So in our um, diagram notation, we have here 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and this element is uh, denoted by this picture. 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1, and 3 goes to 3. Now notice that S dot s which we'll write as s squared is the identity because if you take 1 to 2 in s then s squared will take 2 back to 1 right you can work this out easily so what we have is identity so if if so if, if we have a subgroup 
Okay, so now I claim that this set of two elements, one comma s, this is a subset of S3, is a subgroup. Remember, we only need to check two things that if we have two elements x, y, so let's call this h. So if two elements are in h, then their product is in h, and if an element is in h, then its inverse is in h. So we have uh, the only two elements in h are 1 and s, and clearly 1 into s, that's s, that's in h, s into 1, that's s, that's also in h, 1 into 1 is 1, that's also in h, and s into s is 1, so that's also in h. So this 1, I should have said identity here, I guess. Yeah. So this is a sub, uh, well, oh yeah, then I also have to check if it's an inverse. Well, identity inverse is identity, so that's in h, s inverse is what? So s inverse is the element which if I multiply by s, I get identity. But right here, you see that s dot s is identity. So s inverse is equal to s. So this h is a subgroup. Okay, let me give you another example of a subgroup of, take uh, c to be the element which takes 1 to 2, and then c takes 2 to 3, and c takes 3 to 1. So pictorially, this is given by one goes to two, two goes to three, three goes to one. So this is C, and uh, what is C squared? So C squared is Okay, let's just work this out. So 1 goes to 2 and then 2 goes to 3. Right? So I'm applying C two times. So first I apply C, 1 goes to 2. And then again I apply C to that result, 2 goes to 3. So under C squared, 1 goes to 3. Then where does 2 go? Well, 2 goes to 3, but 3 in turn goes to 1. So, yeah, let me label these things. And 3 goes to, well, 3 goes to 1 and then 1 goes to 2. So 3 goes to 2. And then let's work out C cubed. So now we have to apply C 3 times. So under C cubed, firstly, when you apply C the first time, 1 goes to 2. Then the second time, 2 goes to 3. And then we multiply the third time, apply the third time, 3 goes to 1. So 1 goes to 1. Similarly, 2 goes to 2 and 3 goes to 3. And uh, what this also says is that C inverse is C squared and C squared inverse is C. And uh, with this, you can check that identity C, C squared is also subgroup of S3. Okay. Now I'm going to show you a very nice way to construct a large and rich family of subgroups. But before that, yeah, let me point out that a subgroup is a group in its own right. What does this mean? So suppose I have G a group, H a subgroup. Now this G comes with a binary operation, G cross G to G, which I usually denote by dot. So you can restrict that 
to H. That means just take the same binary operation but apply it only to elements of H. So, so this H is again a set with um, a binary operation. And I claim that with this binary operation, H is a group. And uh, to do this, what we need to check, we need to check the axioms for a group. And uh, so the axioms are, uh, you know, so firstly, the point is this H to H goes into G a priori, but the act, one of the axioms of the subgroups is that if you take two elements in a subgroup and multiply them, then the result is in the subgroup. So this is actually going into H. Right. And um, uh, we know that the identity is in H. We know associativity is inherited from G into H, right? So if you have three elements X, Y, Z of H, then X dot Y dot Z is equal to X dot Y dot Z in G. Therefore, that's also true in H because we're using the same operation. Um, and uh, inverse, uh, well, we've asked, uh, we've put that as a requirement for being a sub. Okay, so so let's look at these uh, two examples that we had earlier. We had two subgroups of S3. We had the group uh, 1, comma, S and 1, comma, C, comma, C squared. So this is a group with two elements. In fact, it's isomorphic to C2, the, the group uh, Z mod or, or uh, Z mod 2, the cyclic group of 12 integers mod 2 and this is isomorphic to the cyclic group with three elements also known as z mod 3 z. <clears throat> you can just see how to do this uh, z, 1 goes to 0 and z mod 2 z and s goes to 1 and z mod 2 z here 1 goes to 0 c goes to 1 and c squared goes to 2 okay now let me show you a nice way of constructing many interesting groups so let's start with an example so what I'm going to do is I'm going to construct an interesting subgroup of S4. So S4 is permutations on four letters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the square. So one, two, three, four. These are going to be the vertices of a square. Uh, and I'm going to draw the edges like this. So if you know some graph theory, you'll see that this can be regarded as a graph. So what is a graph? A graph is um, consists of a pair that is a set of vertices and a set of edges. So in this case, um, so an edge is a subset of size 2 of B. So in this case, the set of vertices is 1, 2, 3, 4. And the set of edges is, well, there's 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, and 4, 1. Right? So now I'm going to look at the subgroup of S4, which I'll call, um, so let's call this thing uh, S for square, script S. So I'm going to look at the subgroup called automorphisms of S. Okay, literally, automorphisms means um, a self transformation. So we are going to look for a subgroup called self, which is the self transformations of the squares. So what is the definition of this? So this is going to be the group well, of those elements in S4 such that uh, for all ij in uh, between 1 and 4, so that's just denoted by box so this is the set one two three four set of four if uh, ij is an edge then
W I W J. H okay so here we are looking at bijections from the set 1 2 3 4 to the set 1 2 3 4 which preserve the edge relations of the graph script s so now in the group s4 we have 24 elements and the question is uh, what what are the of these 24 which are the elements that will um, preserve these edge relations so let's see if we can figure this out so um, so art s what are the elements of art s so remember we have this nice notation for writing uh, uh, permutations the one line notation so it's just w1 w2 w3 in this case w4 okay so with this ot s okay so firstly what's the most obvious element that it contains it contains the identity element which is one two three four okay now let's see suppose uh, we want to fix one what else can we do so if we fix one uh, one two is an edge so 2 must go to, uh, 2 cannot go to 3 if 1 goes to 1. So we are assuming that 1 goes to 1. If 1 goes to 1, 2 cannot go to 3 because uh, 1, 2 is an edge, but 1, 3 is not an edge. So it would violate this condition of uh, which defines ought s. So, but 2 can go to 4 because uh, if... Um, uh, 1, 2 is an edge, well, 1, 4 is also an edge. So we can do 1, 4. And uh, 3 will have to stay where it is. Uh, 4 will come to 2. Why does 3 have to stay where it is? Because 3 is the only vertex which is not connected to 1 by an edge. And 1 is fixed. So that means 3 will also have to be fixed. Okay, so we've written down all the uh, permutations uh, where uh, in ought s where 1 goes to 1. Now let's see what happens if 1 goes to 2. So if 1 goes to 2 then 2 must go to something that's uh, adjacent to 1. Uh, to Yeah so 1 goes to 2 so 2 must go to something that's adjacent to 2 right. So 2 must go to either 3 or 1. So let's first say that 2 goes to 3. And uh, so 1 has gone to 2. Uh, so now 3 is the only vertex that's not connected to 1. So th 3 must go to the only vertex that's not connected to 2. So it will go to 4. And uh, 4 will go to... 1. Uh, 2 has gone to 1. Let's see. So 1 has gone to 2. 2 has gone to 1. 3 has gone to 4. 4 has to go to 3. And we will also have uh, 2 can go to something that's next to 2. So 2 can go to 3. 3 can go. 3 has to go to 4. We know that. 4 can go to 1. And then there are a few more. So now suppose 1 goes to 3. Then there are two possibilities. Um, I'll just write them down. I'll, I'll give you a better explanation of this later. So 1 goes to 3. 2 goes to 2. 4 goes to 4. Uh, 3 goes to 1. And... Uh, 4 goes to 2 and then um, 3 um, 2 goes to so 1 goes to 3 so 2 has to go to something next to 3 so there are 2 choices so 
can go to four three goes to one and so this has to be two four goes to two and there are two more one goes to four then we can have uh, four has to two has to go to something that's next to four so two can go to one in which case three will go to two and four will go to three and finally one goes to four two goes to three three goes to two and four goes to one so um, you can check that these are the eight elements which lie in ot s um, let's just take a look at this uh, these eight elements again and try to see geometrically what they mean so this one two three four is just the identity everything stays fixed okay what about one four three two so one is getting swapped with four and uh, one no one is going to one yeah uh, four and two are getting swapped so so and and uh, three remains where it is so this element here is a reflection about an axis like this right and let's look at uh, the next element one goes to two two goes to one three goes to four and four goes to three so this element is a reflection about an axis like this let me just write this down so this is a reflection about an axis like this this element is a reflection about a vertical axis what about this two three four one so one goes to two uh, two goes to three three goes to four and four goes to one so this is a rotation by 90 degrees so i'll write it like this it's a clockwise rotation by 90 degrees and what about this element one goes to three two goes to two uh, oops, this is not a permutation. One goes to three, two goes to two, uh, four goes to four here. So one goes to three. So this is a rotation about this kind of axis. And now here what's happening? One goes to three. Uh, one goes to three, two goes to four, three goes to one, and two goes to two. You can see that this is a rotation by 180 degrees. And let's see some more here. Four goes to one, one goes to two, two goes to three. Four goes to oh no one goes to four, two goes to one, three goes to two and four goes to three. So this is a rotation counterclockwise by ninety degrees. And what's this last one? So uh, one goes to four, uh, two goes to three and then three goes to two and so it's it's a reflection like this about an axis like this and so what we're looking at here is the subgroup ot s really consists of um, very geometric objects they're all uh, rotations um, by multiples of 90 degrees or they are reflections about either vertical or horizontal or diagonal axes. So there are four axes of rotation. So there are four, uh, four reflections and, uh, well, four rotations if you consider this as a rotation by zero degrees in either clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. This group is usually called um, D, well, some people call it D4 and some people call it D8. Um, I'll call it D4. 
Okay, so now we are ready to go to the general uh, definition here. So let gamma be a graph. Uh, with vertex set uh, 1 to n. So I'll just say. Right, so what we are saying is that gamma is a graph, so it's a data, defining data as so n comma e. And this e is some collection of subsets uh, of size 2 of n, those are the edges. Then odd gamma, the automorphism group of gamma, is defined to be a set of those permutations W in Sn such that if for all i j in N, if i j is an edge, then W i W j is also an edge. Okay, and this construction allows you to construct a large family of subgroups of permutation groups. Um, let's let's just do another simple one. So let's take uh, now a subgroup of S three. Uh, which is given by uh, just one, two, three, the triangle graph. And uh, what is the automorphism group of this? Well, notice that in this graph, every pair, E, is every subset of size two. of 3. So this condition that if ij belongs to n then w i uh, is an edge then w i w j is an edge is always true because everything is an edge. So here what is it? Ot gamma is S3. So more generally if you take a complete graph That is a graph where any two vertices are con connected by an edge. Uh, and in particular, when I say Kn, I mean that the vertex set is 1 to n. Then this is Sn. So Sn itself can be thought of as the automorphism group of a graph. If you want to instead of the complete graph, you can also take the discrete graph with no edges at all. And you'll still get Sn. And let me end with just one more uh, small example. Let's take gamma to be the graph. Yeah, so one, two, three, four, five. And um, what is odd gamma? So now you see if, uh, uh, yeah, so suppose W is an odd gamma, then where can one go? Okay, suppose one goes to uh, suppose 1 goes to 2, then uh, 2 has to go to either 1 or 3 because it has to go to something next than 1. But then uh, one, if 2 goes to uh, 3, then uh, the only thing you can do is send 3 to 4 and uh, 4 to 5, but then there's no place to send 5 because 4 is already taken up. So 1 cannot go to 2. Uh, basically, intuitively what it's saying is that this 1 has only one neighbor, whereas 2 has two neighbors. And so any symmetry which preserves this graph structure cannot take a point with only one neighbor to a point with two neighbors. So 1 can only go to 1 or to 5. If 1 goes to 1, then 2 will go to 2, 3 will go to 3, 4 will go to 4, 5 will go to 5.
but if one goes to five then five will go to four uh, two will go to four three will go to three four will go to two and five will go to three. so uh, in the exercises i'll uh, give you um, some more rules to understand what automorphism groups are and uh, you'll work out more such uh, examples.